Did you know our next virtual aesthetic marketing seminar is happening May 16th and 17th? We are bringing you two days of no nonsense, straight to the point strategies that are working right now in spa so that you can gain the time freedom and financial freedom that you want and deserve. If you're already enrolled in a program at Addo Aesthetics, your ticket is totally free. And if not, you can still join in on the fun for only $97. Head on over to to the link in bio on our Instagram page at Addo Aesthetics to get more info and your ticket today. Hello, my dears, Daniela here, and welcome to the Spa Marketing Made Easy podcast. This episode is brought to you by Addo Aesthetics, the number one coaching company for aesthetic professionals wanting to step into the role of spa CEO. But how do you define a spa CEO? You might be thinking that, right? What does that even mean? Well, let me tell you, I see a spa CEO as someone who outsources and delegates rather than maintaining ultimate control and just being a bottleneck in their business. It's someone who makes time to develop systems rather than wasting time doing the same thing over and over again, because it's faster if I do it myself, or it's only going to take me two minutes. All of that adds up. A spa CEO is someone who uses action to create clarity rather than someone who waits to take action because they're a perfectionist. It's someone who responds rather than reacts. So if you want to step into that role of spa CEO, I want to invite you to head on over to our Instagram. Follow us. If you're not already, send us a DM, say hi. We have all kinds of free resources over there that we can send you. No opt-in required. Just send us a message and we'll ask you a couple questions and boom, we'll send you some of our free resources, okay? So if you're not already following us, please be sure to do that. We are on a mission to elevate this industry. All right, so now on to the topic of the day. This was a really interesting interview with Ron Rag. He walked us through his framework for you to become a micro celebrity in your niche so that you can charge higher prices and expand your reach. Super cool topic. So if you don't know Ron, he's a marketing and launch strategist for mission-driven experts and coaches who want to scale from six to seven figures and beyond. So he's typically working with those in the online space. So I felt super excited, super honored for him to be so gracious with his time and apply his genius to brick and mortar, to spa. So definitely Take some notes as you're going through. He's walking us through this framework, and I want you to think about each step, how you can apply this to your business, right? If you're using these marketing strategies, using his framework, ultimately, if you do it the right way, you will be able to charge higher prices. You will expand your reach. Super, super cool. All right, guys, enjoy this episode and hang out with me in the Facebook group if you have any questions. Hello, Ron. Welcome to the Spa Marketing Made Easy podcast. Super, super excited to have you here today. I am very excited to be here. Thank you so much. So in the world of spa, this is such a wide ranging industry and we see people in our industry grow to massive, massive success because they are the esthetician to the to Michelle Obama or the esthetician to the Kardashians or these different celebrity people Mm -hmm. in our industry and your approach, which I think is super, super interesting. You're saying, Hey, you can increase your prices. You can have that notoriety. You become a micro celebrity yourself Mm -hmm. and really be the celebrity, create that brand awareness and position or differentiate yourself from others in that manner. So like, I think that's just a amazing idea to begin with, but Mm -hmm. tell me how you really got into the world of marketing and how you um, started thinking in this manner. Okay, cool. Yeah, really excited to dive into it. So as far as um, how I got into marketing, I actually, I'm showing my age here, is uh, I actually first uh, found out about 
I got explosive marketing back in 2015, no, 2005 from this guy by the name of Dan Kennedy, who this was back when it was called direct response marketing or information marketing and mm-hmm. things along those lines. And then for the first, for really for the first half of my career, I really focused on selling my own products, my own digital products and things along those lines. Um, like kind of really as behind the scenes type of person. And then eventually I got into helping other entrepreneurs and business owners grow their businesses, um, kind of going from like the, the doing to more of the being more of an educator side of things. And one of the things that just came up over and over again is that the people who were really into building their brands oftentimes, and this has really always been true, but the people who are really focused on building their brands and building their celebrity, those were always the people that would make the most money. And the truth of the matter is oftentimes quite independent of how good they were at at their craft, uh, if that makes a lot of, if that makes sense. Really being behind this whole like influencer marketing, influencer marketing in a sense is you've got to create yourself as an influencer. You've got to have this Mm. personal brand. And when you have that, it's, it's almost like in the psyche, it's like, oh, if they have this many followers or they have this really unique or interesting lifestyle, then there's something special about them that attracts me to them. And I want to buy their thing. Absolutely. Yeah. My, one of my, one of my biggest uh, marketing mentors, this guy by the name of Dan Kennedy, he talks about one of the things he says is that money moves to status money moves to status. So uh, you mentioned the Kardashians. They're probably the best example I could think of. Um, you're, you and your listeners probably know that, um, what is her name? Kylie Jenner, one of the Kardashian sisters, she became like the youngest female billionaire in the history of the world. And she did that. And I, I know her esthetician. Oh, her there we go. Crystal, and her, she has hundreds of thousands of people that now follow her. <laughs> she's probably the richest esthetician around, or she's probably one of them. Exactly. That's almost like the, the cause and effect. Exactly. So yeah, what I was both. Yeah. So two great examples there, obviously Kylie Jenner is a, she's a very smart businesswoman, a very savage businesswoman. She knows what she's doing and she was able to use her celebrity to, you know, sell lots of uh, makeup and, and, and different products and things like that. And again, your 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 friend, what is your, your friend's name? So Crystal, now I'm sure she's an amazing esthetician and there are probably other estheticians that are just as good as her. I would, you would know better than me that are probably have similar skill sets that are probably not, you know, generating the income she's doing. And that's primarily in this case, because of her association with, uh, Kit with, uh, with, with Kylie. So the thing that is, um, the thing that I really want you, the listener, to understand is that you can become, we're talking about being a micro celebrity. You know, obviously Kylie Jenner is a, is a big, real, actual mainstream celebrity and she became a billionaire, but we don't need to do that. What we need to do is we need to become a quote unquote celebrity, develop status, become a larger than life figure for just a very, very specific target audience. And if we can do that, then we can we can dominate our local market or we can dominate our industry. And um, I have kind of a formula that um, I'm excited to share with you on, on how we can do that. So just realize that when we're talking about being a micro celebrity, it's really just about kind of, um, um, you know, there's kind of this classic idea of uh, that, that came from a little while ago, like a thousand true fans. Mm-hmm. Like the idea that if you, if you have a thousand true fans, that would be, you'd be able to make a, make over a hundred thousand dollars a year. This was back in like 2007. Things have kind of changed since then. It's actually, I would say you actually need less than a thousand true fans to even make a lot more than a hundred thousand dollars a year. But the same idea is that we don't need to become a, a celebrity to millions of people. We really need to have, you know, maybe a few hundred, maybe a thousand people to who really, really look up to us. And then, and then we're golden. So my next question was going to be, well, okay. So for just, you know, the average individual, the average spa owner in Idaho or someplace, mm-hmm. like how do they become a micro celebrity? Is it, you know, getting into their niche and really becoming known for a particular thing? Or you had mentioned you have a formula for this. How does that work? 
Yeah, all those things are all those things are 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 are, are um, what you mentioned are parts of the formula. I, there's essentially six parts to it. I can essentially um, just go over them if that yeah. is that unless that's a little dense for <laughs> for this podcast. No, uh, no uh, let's talk. Let's talk through it. I think it's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So yeah, the first thing you want to do is of course decide on your your specific niche your specific t- target market so if we're going to be looking at this woman um i would imagine a woman i know there are male estheticians in in idaho ideally what she's going to be want to be looking at is you know really the more targeted with her niche niche she could be she could she, mm-hmm. the better she's going to be so maybe her niche is going to be um it might be just women like idaho i mean idaho's a big So we have within our industry, we have like, you can be a wax specialist, you can be a lash Mm -hmm. artist, you can be a microblader. So Mm -hmm. having like these specialties that you're doing, but Mm -hmm. would you even get further niched down? Like I'm a Brazilian, um, like for Brazilian waxing, that's my specialty. So this is the exercise. What we want to be thinking about, it's about that combination of about it's your specialty, your superpower, which will actually, that's part of the fun, which, which we'll talk about. It's your specialty. And then combining that with the actual per- target market, with the actual person. So ideally, um, what's one of the specialties that you mentioned? Just, just mention one of them again, so we could use as an example. Um, a lash artist. A lash artist. Okay, great. So possibly like if I was kind of just getting started at this and I was a good lash artist, I might be thinking maybe I'll be lash artist. That's my specialty to X person. Maybe, maybe it's like, I'm going to be the lash artist only to, again, this is for like hard, natural yeah. looking lashes or drama lashes. Cause when people do lashes, the lash extensions, they can do them in so many different ways. So are you saying the style or for you know, women over 40. Yeah, or, it, would be, it would be, I'm thinking more of the second one. It might okay. be women over 40, or it might be for mothers, for example, mm-hmm. or it might be, or, you know, this is where you would have to kind of do some play with your audience. And yeah. you would have to, you would have to play with your audience. Like, like if you're a mother, maybe you'd want to target mother. If you're, a, you know, younger, you know, someone who's younger who doesn't have kids, then maybe that might it might make sense to not target mothers. Again, maybe it does. I'm not saying there's no hard and fast rules rules here, but it is kind of um, one thing I'll tell you. Here's a, a shortcut to this. Here's actually the shortcut. If you and I'm I'm sure I'm guessing most of, most of those listening to this have. If you are already working with clients, which and you have regular clients, spend some time looking at the commonalities specifically of your best clients. And then, um, you know, I, when I did this exercise, for example, uh, on my own, uh, my own uh, consulting business, I came to the conclusion, I figured out that most of my clients were actually, uh, they actually were mothers, actually, actually brown haired mothers were actually like my, uh, my, my happened to be like who I really, uh, who resonated with me. So what you'll find is that, if you do this exercise, think about, you know, your, your, you know, if you have a roster, you know, 10, 20 clients, think, take it, just write them down and look at, are there any commonalities? Maybe there are some democratic demographic uh, commonalities that, that I, that I mentioned, maybe they might all live in a, like if maybe if you're, if you're locally based, maybe they might all live in a certain neighborhood or something like that, but whatever it's, it, whatever it's going to be is whatever it's going to be. And then you can, um, in, in, in your messaging and in your marketing and like in the examples you use in your, in your marketing, for example, you can really, really zero in on that. So you might not say, so I actually typically don't say in my marketing or in my messaging, Hey, if you're a I serve brown haired mom, <laughs> yeah, I do not say that, but I kind of like when I'm, when I'm, when I'm doing presentations, I kind of, and when I'm writing copy, I kind of have that an idea of who that person is. Person, yeah. And I oftentimes will use examples like, you know, if you, you know, you might be a mother or you might have, you know, X, X, Y, Z. So I, I don't really say you might have brown hair, but I do kind of allude to that kind yeah. of thing. And a lot of like, if you go on my website, you'll see lots of testimonials and case studies from people who are in my, who are in my audience. So, um, so yeah, so that's kind of it. So first thing is, it's kind of, it's, it's that, that's probably a great place to start. It's, it's, it's your specialty 
plus the person. And once we have that, then let's go on to the uh, the next uh, the next step, which is uh, now we're we're getting into some some fun um some fun some more fun stuff is you want to be thinking about what I call your essentially your your celebrity persona or your mm-hmm. superhero persona. So this is where you want to be um thinking of yourself as kind of a almost like a character like if you want you want you like from the audience's standpoint they want to see when they think of you you want them to to have like an image in 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 their head which is like a soup which is like a superhero for example so for example like in my um i'll give you some i'll give you kind of an exercise on how to do this in a second so like my kind of persona that i like to play to the audience is uh it's kind of like, like quirky marketing genius dude I'm kind of like this, you know, a little bit awkward, but but people, when they work with me, they end up making lots of money because I can really help them optimize their marketing campaigns. For example, my superpower is, is, is related to is related to marketing. So in your in the so and the thing that I want to get across here is that a lot of it is like taking your I actually learned this from uh something that might not be uh on your uh on your on your audience's uh watch list from actually i used to be a big kind of professional wrestling you know wwe and things like that Mm -hmm. and they say that when the um when the uh when they're training wrestlers on how to develop their character they say take your existing personality and multiply it by 10. so that's kind of like how you want to think about showing up so this might be this is it's really just enhancing your existing personality and of course you do want to be if you're if, if you have a specialization you would want to really, you know, highlight that specialization. That's kind of part of your, that's part of your, that's part of your super, that's part of your superpowers and things along those lines. So that would be kind of like how you want to start that, how you want to start with that. And the thing I want to, I want to um, point out is that, you know, the more you can be a character, the more you can be memorable and really show people kind of like your personality. This is a, of course, this great examples. Um, I imagine most of your audience is using social media, Instagram, and things like that. Mm-hmm. This is where actually showing, showing, you know, showcasing your lifestyle, not even not just like the the glamorous parts of your lifestyle, but just showing how you're a how you're a normal person. Those things really, really get people. They really, really get connect people connected to you and resonating with you, and that kind of um, shows that superhero. Um, you know, super, that shows that kind of celebrity factor. Going back to the Kardashians, right? One of the reasons why people um, are so fascinated with the Kardashians is, of course, they're they have this dichotomy of they're like these they're superstars that kind of have it all, but they're in the tabloids all the time, and they have all sorts of problems, right? They're always like you know having relationship problems, or there's like you know, arguments with their exes, or like you know they're they just gain they went on a trip and they gained thirty pounds. All these things actually make them more interesting, and it actually gets people to relate to them more. Um, if, if that makes sense, so you can do the same thing. With with your audience, audience, not saying you need to like you know be happy, you know like share game, everything, game. but choose the yeah. five, uh, you know maybe five or six content buckets of things that you're comfortable. Yeah, share. like I personally don't um, share images or anything of my kids, mm-hmm. but I talk about being a mom all of the time. So like yeah, for sure, having totally. saying okay, this is what I'm comfortable, um, and in in sure. a kind of personal brand, it's like you have to share a lot of stuff I've found, but it's also like, I don't share anything that I wouldn't share with someone that I was sitting next to on an airplane. Yeah, you know? yeah, so totally. it's that exactly fine that, balance sure. of how can I highlight? Yeah. Um, I think Gary Vee does a great job of this because I know he also doesn't share his kids, but you feel like you know everything about him, but there's That's, obviously this whole other part yeah, of the world. He's the classic example. And like, it's one of those things where like, I, uh, so for example, one of the things that I, that's part of like my personality is I'm really into dogs. You can actually see uh, you know, one of my dogs is behind me. And so many people are actually there. They resonate with me more, almost more because they talk, because I talk about my dogs and just have pictures of them even more so than my actual, like the things that I'm teaching, you know? So the idea is that 
it doesn't even have to be that like really fascinating. Finding a point of connection. It, like exactly, someone else that totally. loves dogs can connect. Yeah, with you. yeah, exactly. And even if they don't love, even if they don't themselves love job, obviously that helps. Um, but it just makes me more of a, it just makes me more, more of a three-dimensional character. It makes me more interested. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. So what's the next? And then, uh, yeah, cause I'm just moving right along here. This is, uh, really, a, this is really one of my favorite topics. So I'm glad this is, uh, I'm glad this is exciting for you uh, as well. So the next one is to decide on our values. This is really talking about what we stand for and what we stand against. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you think about you know, superheroes, right? Like, you know, Superman, he stands for, you know, truth, justice, and the American way. You mentioned uh, Gary Vee a second ago. One of, um, when people think of Gary Vee, let's, uh, well, I'll just, let's try this. Let's try this right now. When I, when I mentioned Gary Vee, what are some words that come to mind when you think of Gary Vee? I actually think he's incredibly compassionate. And I think he, he talks a lot about kindness and acceptance. And he counters that with cursing and abruptness. Mm -hmm. So he, I feel like he gets your attention with those things, but his message seems to be just acceptance and loving and supportive, even though it's, it contradicts the. Abrasive yeah, message. yeah, yeah. Great. So that's, um, that's a great example. So Gary B, what I would say is that he, again, we talked about the kind of the dichotomy uh, with like the in the context of the Kardashians, with like Gary Vee, I would say things he stands for. He stands for on, on one hand, he stands for uh, for kindness, compassion, and really like you know making an impact. And a lot of people when they think of Gary Vee, they think of the whole like hustle. They think of like they think oh, of yeah, the yeah, hustle. Yeah. They they think of the mm -hmm. kind of like being 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 everywhere. So any so and like you really got to do the work, for example. So those are things that really he, he stands for. He definitely does not stand for he he like one of his enemies is really like being lazy and like not doing the work, for example, right? And so that's again that's so that's an example. So you want to do the same thing with your with your brand. You want to think about what are the things that you stand for. And, and who might your, your enemies be, for example. So, for example, just um, when it comes to estheticians, maybe it's, for example, obviously you'd want, ideally we want our values, kind of a shortcut to this, shortcut to this is we want the values, the things that we stand for. We want those to be the things that our target market, things that, they, that basically we want, we want to mirror them. They want to be things that we, that we think that your target market is so going to resonate with. Go ahead. One of our, one of our clients in growth factor, Heather, her tagline is skincare simplified. Mm -hmm. And it's really about coming up with like, you don't have to use 700 serums. It's like, yeah, we're going to come right. in, we're going to go mm -hmm. straight to the point. We're going to simplify yes. whatever this, you know, algorithm is to get you the results that you're looking for fast. So yeah, that's great. So yeah, go ahead. No, as you say, is that what you mean? Yeah, like, yeah. That, that, that's a great, that's a really good example. So, uh, what is her name again? Heather. So Heather, yeah, one of her values, she stands for simplicity. So I believe, you know, if she was like expressing this as a value, which is this is kind of an exercise I would encourage people to do, is like I believe that um, being beautiful does not need to be complicated. It can be a simple. It could be it could be a simple process that would be kind of that manifested as a, as a, as a value, as a statement. And then it, and it sounds like she does a good job of this, then kind of like it, when you have your value, it is going to talk about like the enemy, what is the, what is the opposite? So in her case, yeah, her enemy is, yeah, people, you know, you know, the other people, like the other companies telling you that you need 57 million different products in order to be, in order to be beautiful. And so as she talks about that, the people that, um, you know, her target market, they're going to most likely, they're going to, they're going to resonate with that. They're like, oh yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I think beauty does not need to be complicated uh, either. So yeah, that's a great, actually real, real world example. Perfect. Love that. And then uh, so, so yeah, so I'd encourage people to think about, think about, you know, three to five things that you stand for that your, that, that ideally your target market, that would mirror the the values of your target market. So like another one, if I was just kind of brainstorming this, uh, obviously do your market research, but it might be um, uh, maybe, so I'd imagine many um, uh, uh, 
um, many, many of the people that like possible clients uh, for the, for the people listening to this, you know, maybe they might think, oh, I'm too old to be, to be beautiful. Like I'm too old to be past, I'm, I'm past my prime. So one of your values that you might want to point out in your marketing, if you were to, if, if you were to sell to this um, audience would be like, I believe that women can be beautiful at any age, for example. Mm -hmm. And you'd like want to put that as one of your values front and center in, in your, in your marketing. Mm -hmm. if, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. Um, cool, cool, cool. So yeah, so that's again, yeah, we we don't have time to go through like you know go through this do the whole in depth training on this, but hopefully this will give give people some idea. Just the high uh, level overview, to, yeah, is really it's, interesting. It, exactly, great stuff. And then uh, so yeah, we just have a couple uh, three more here. We're just uh, we're moving right along. Is the next one, which I think is probably a huge opportunity um, for for you listening to this, and this is actually creating your own. Uh, like your own framework, your own science, your own proprietary process around, around what you do. So again, we mentioned like specialization. The more you can, um, the more you can point out that what you're, that there's a special process, like there's some hidden magic behind, it's not like hidden, you're, you ideally want to talk about this. Um, that's going to that's going to just help you stand out and it's going to make you seem again like this larger than life larger than life fit figures so one of the one of the really good, good examples about this is um here's the thing your proprietor oftentimes when we're talking about like your proprietary process i would imagine for many for for many many of those listening to this it it doesn't really need to be anything that's different than what other people are doing. It's more just a matter of, of talking about it and just pointing out what you're doing, like in an interesting, in an interesting way, for example. So for example, um, one of the classic examples is, do you remember uh, PX90, the, the workout program from, from, from P90X, I'm sorry. From P90X, I remember the name. I never did it, but I remember the name. Okay, before. yeah. So if you're familiar with, did you ever watch the infomercial? I have not had cable since like the early, yeah, so no. Let's check you out. Okay, that's impressive because that was a minute ago. So anyways, that was amongst the most, maybe the most successful like, home workout programs ever. And it was basically this, um, basically it was a 90 day program where you would work out like 60 minutes per day. And the, the, the secret sauce of how it worked, like in the infomercial, was this idea of what they called muscle confusion. The idea it was that, you know, basically you have to change up your workouts. You know, if you change up your workouts every, every, every week or so, you create quote unquote muscle confusion. And that's what's, that's what causes you to grow muscle and learn fat really, 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 really quickly. So the idea there is that they gave, they, they, they gave a proprietary name, muscle confusion to like essentially a thing that kind of calm, a kind of a common thing that would happen in quite a few different workouts well-designed workout programs, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So this, that was kind of like the, the, the mechanism, the unique mechanism that made it. That so made it for sense. example, if someone, if a spot owner was like an acne specialist um, mm -hmm. and treating acne, they would come up with their own signature approach that may include a lot of the same ingredients, um, you know, the salicylics, the, all the stuff that are, you know, commonly used in treating acne, but for them putting it together in their own signature way, that becomes their, it, exactly, yeah, their skincare philosophy of their skincare approach. Totally. Exactly. So like, um, it might be exactly that. It might even be like, it might be just talking about what everybody like like what everybody else is doing, nobody else is talking about. It. It's just, it's just pointing out, like we have this five-step process, which we call X, Y, Z, step one, step two, step three, and make them obviously sound kind of unique and interesting. That in itself is really going to help you, help you stand out a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Another thing um, you might even consider, um, this is uh, really common, like in the, in the health space, like especially, um, I'm talking more about like selling like supplements and selling things that you, that you consume, but really talking about if you have special ingredients, that mm -hmm. is the kind of thing that is really going to help you stand out. Like, so for example, like if you're, if as part of your process, you're using special, um, 
special oils or whatnot that are only available in. Yeah, I I can see. So we have a lot of um, spot owners that do private label skincare or do custom formulations for their own skincare brands. And I, we do see that a lot in skincare. It's like, yeah, yeah. coffee berry or like whatever the actual ingredient that makes it this superstar product. Absolutely. So a lot of times it's just, just talking about that. So like, again, this is just one of those things. A lot of people, um, and yeah, just thank you for pointing that, putting that out. Many, as I'm sure you and your uh, uh, listeners know, these these skincare companies, they really know what, many of them really, really, really know what they're doing when it comes to selling their product, when it comes to marketing. So yeah, in a lot of times we can just kind of hijack their already good marketing and just talking about that, Mm -hmm. you know, for example, um, Sarah in Idaho, you know, her competitors are probably not talking about the special, (laughs) the special coffee bean ingredients from, from Brazil that are helping them that, mm-hmm. that are, that are in their formulation. Absolutely. hundred percent. So yeah, so that's kind of, that's the third one. It's basically creating your own, your own unique uh, uh, process. Essentially, this is where you're just taking your existing process and talking about it, giving it a cool, giving, giving it, it a cool, cool name. Yeah. Giving it a cool name and just and, and pointing it out. That makes a big difference. The um, cool, cool. moving right along here. The uh, next thing is, yeah, there's two more, is um, two more, uh, we can go, yeah, we're, we can go quicker on these, is really just creating your, we, we mentioned creating your, your superhero persona. The other big, big one is creating your, your backstory, your super, essentially your hero's journey backstories, kind of like talking about, you know, where you came from and how you got to where you are and why you're doing what what you do just having that story like if you look at all of the, the all, all the great brands they they pretty much have like some kind of a hero's journey journey some kind of an origin story like you know like you know the story of like and McDonald's, i think for example, most of us in skincare we had really bad skin ourselves or we had acne that we overcame yeah. and we wanted to help other people we got really interested in you know i mean that's a very very common yeah, way absolutely. that people get into aesthetics yeah. Absolutely. And so this is, again, a lot of this, none of, none of the stuff we're talking about here is like super groundbreaking. And I know many of you people uh, or many of those listening to this have heard, have heard these kinds of things before, but again, you might think that your story, that story that you mentioned, oh, well, maybe everybody has, every, every esthetician has the same story, but they are not talking about it. Like they're not mm-hmm. bringing that story out in, in their marketing. So just by talking about it, that's going to get people, um, you know, get people resonating with you and, and creating that micro celebrity. Okay. And the last thing. So the last one we have here is really, this is, um, it's basically picking your, picking your place and cre- creating your, creating, a, creating your own world. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, basically creating your own world, creating your universe. What I'm talking about here is, um, and that's actually, you can actually do this physically, obviously, with uh, if because most people, many people listen to this actually have like an actual brick and mortar location, have, yeah. have, have a location. But so there's a few different, this is a little three dimensional, there's a few different elements here. But one of the things we want to be thinking about is that if think if you could think about like a universe, like if you think about fictional universes, like for example, um, think about if you think about the Star Wars universe or like. If you if you watch Game of Thrones or um, the Marvel Cinematic Universes, you know when you when you go or Harry, I was watching Harry Potter uh, a, a couple nights ago. Um, you know, you know when you step into these worlds, you feel like they're in this in, in this new different place, right? But of course, spoiler alert: <laughs> these worlds don't actually exist. They're all totally works of fiction, and they really started out. Uh, they start out really as words on paper and eventually got manifested with visuals and like, you know, you know, in, in, in like mostly in, in movies and things like that. So what I'm getting at is that uh, you listen to this, have the opportunity to create your own world uh, to your audience. And you really do that through media. So there's um, or one way to do that. This is kind of like the non-physical world is through media. So you want to be thinking about how are you, 
how are you communicating with your audience? So for, I would imagine for most people, it's probably a combination between, I guess our suspects in this case would be, you know, social media, email, and some, and especially if people are working locally, they might actually send things out uh, in the, in the mail. So the idea here is to use, use whatever media uh, you decide makes sense for you and really use that to create kind of like your own, your own world, like your own sense of place. So this idea is that when you are in, you know, Sally's world, it has a certain feeling. feeling Even like a signature scent and it's just like really creating that experience that all the marketing materials have this cohesiveness that make you feel a certain way when you go into that. Location. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there's also something I would con- consider um, the more we can make it, the more we can make it seem like it's this exclusive place that the better, like to make it feel like, it, or you can actually create, uh, I mean, to be honest, like literally, uh, I mean, you might teach this in your program, like literally creating like a club, right? Creating some kind of an organization that itself kind of creates that, uh, you know, that, that, that extra layer of, oh, we're in this, we're in this together. We're, we're in this special place. The idea is like, when you're in the club, good things happen. And when you're in X, Y, Z, you know, universe, yeah, we, good things happen. Go ahead. In spa, we do memberships. And so it'll be like you pay a certain amount each month, you get a, a spa treatment, but the memberships that really, really thrive are the ones where they are creating a community and they have yeah. members only events yes, and they have yes, yes, yes. like you exactly know, special that. invite only things that is about building relationship and community. It's not just about, you're going to get this service at this discounted price by yeah. being a member. It's you belong. This is a social thing. Yeah. A hundred percent. So that is amazing. If I would encourage everybody to do that. And the other thing I would consider is, can you think of it as any of the names of like some of the membership sites offhand or some of the memberships? Yeah. So, um, one of our clients, Lauren, she has orchid skin co is her spa. And then she has the bloom membership and the flourish membership. So it's tied into the name. Um, we have others that have like VIP, um, or like Sykes and Lano insiders or something, you know, like names like that. Okay, great. So who's the first one you mentioned that that's Lauren. Lauren. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I might not, I, she, I'm sure she would come up with a, a better name off. I mean, th- those names are good offhand or offhand. I, I have a deep breath. I have something very, ex- I'm very excited to share with you is so what I might consider doing if I was, if I was Lauren to that's awesome to even kind of enhance it even better. I might consider creating, and she might already have this, but like create like a name for her, like, and this is not so much like the physical, like, for the physical, um, like when they're actually at the events, but more like when she's communicating, like through her newsletter or through her, through her media. Like a name it, for her community. Yeah. Yeah. I would call it like, I'm like offhand, like I might, you might call it rough draft, you know, it could be like the garden, for example, where it's mm-hmm. like, you know, like in her, for example, in her newsletter, again, she could probably come, she could come with a better name, but just for, you know, rough draft working title place, whatever for this conversation, you know, like I can imagine her like in her newsletter when she's like, oh yeah, you know, you know, this month in the garden, we did X, Y, Z. So the idea is that when you're reading it or when you're just like hearing her on social media, talk about the garden, you get that sense that, Oh, it's this, it's this place. It's this place that I want to belong to. Mm -hmm. If if that makes sense. Yeah. I love that. I know words can be so powerful and Mm -hmm. I mean, just in marketing and, and having a name, um, that you're associated with your community, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It does make you feel like you have a sense of like, Absolutely. Hey, I'm a For part sure. of the garden, you know, and totally. if you're exactly. in, you know, Conway, Arkansas, where she is, then like everybody knows where. For sure. That particular exactly. Thing. And it, and the thing that's really great is that it's, it's kind of a force multiplier because not only does it create that sense of community because everybody wants to be in the garden, but when you are the, the leader of the garden. And again, that that's a way to enhance that. Microsoft. She's also a Mrs. Arkansas. 
So I'm there like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. She's got this uh, all over the, she's, she's going to hit this out of the park. It sounds like she's already doing awesome, which is awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, that is, I love that step-by-step process. So for those, for you, the listener, I want you to go back and listen to this episode again. I want you to take notes, all of the things like marketing in general. I, I really think it's pretty simple. It's that people just don't go deep with it and they don't Mm. do, there's so many little things that when combined make a big difference. Absolutely. A lot of things, you know, right. But it's like, how can you take that to the next level? How can you really create this cohesiveness across all channels and let people connect with you. People connect with people. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's one of the things that we've seen in social media. And even with these big brands getting on social media, it's when they have that human aspect, that's Mm -hmm. where the real connection happens. That's where the trust happens. And that's when purchasing decisions happen. So to create that loyalty, it's incredibly important to put that focus not only on your client that's on the table, that's, I mean, you know, priority number Mm -hmm. one, but you've got to continue to maintain and build and attract new relationships through your different marketing channels. And I think Ron, you've given a great, um, you know, pathway for people that maybe feel like marketing is not their wheelhouse. This is a great way to really establish you as the spa owner, as a micro celebrity in your community. Um, even if you have, you know, a thousand people on your following. That's still incredibly, Absolutely. that is, a th- if you were in a room in front of a thousand people, <laughs> you would be like, oh my gosh, you know, yeah, it's a lot of people. Absolutely. It really is. So very good. Well, Ron, I really thank you. This has been so super helpful. Where can our listeners find you, follow you, stay in touch with you, learn more about the things that you do? Yeah, I appreciate that. And yeah, this is a great, great conversation. Excited to uh, continue uh, chatting in the future. Um, we, um, yeah, best place to find me is you can go to my website, www.ronreich.com. There I have what I, I have a 60 second profits checklist that people can, can check out, which will give them some other kind of more tactical things they can do that will grow the revenue. And also just follow me on Facebook or just find me on Facebook. Um, I, actually my personal profile, I put a lot of a lot of love into that and just yeah just find me add me as a friend and uh, we'll go from there perfect and we'll include all the links below this video so that everybody can check those out and as always if you guys want to continue this conversation be sure to head on over to the spa marketing made easy facebook group and we'll chat there <laughs>